Hey everybody, welcome to some Grixis Storm. I'm gonna be playing this in the best of one queue today. And this is an update to the Necro Storm deck that I posted on the channel before. Uh, we've got some of the same bones in this deck as that's in the Grixis Storm, but it, it is quite a bit different actually. So uh, the bones of the deck though are still gonna be your Necropotence, four of and four Beseech the Mirror. The way you get to this mana, of course, is gonna be the best accelerant in Dark Ritual, but we're playing Ornithopters, Shambling Ghast, and then also Phyrexian Tower is kind of like our second mana engine. Um, now, the big change in this build here is I'm only playing one Tendrils of Agony, and I'm not playing any Weather the Storm. So the last build, a lot of times, you would you know try to get out a Necro on either turn one or turn two, and then the, the following turn, you could try to win that turn, but it was not always you know able to do that. You really had to you know, Necro into a couple Dark Rituals, maybe get a little lucky on that first Necro if you were to win on, let's say, turn two or turn three. So a lot of times it would just play out some cards and then play a Weather the Storm or play a Mini Tendrils, gain a bunch of life, and then Necro again, and then be able to win the following turn. That doesn't work when your opponent just plays Show and Tell and then kills you on the spot. And in a way, you're also strategically disadvantaged because you would play your combo, which is to get a Necro into play, and then you have to pass the turn, and then you win the following turn. Meanwhile, Show and Tell is just like, the turn it combos, it kills you. And so that wasn't lining up very well. So um, I made a couple of changes to the deck that are going to allow us to actually win the turn we combo. And the most notable change is I'm playing a Song of Creation, which a Song of Creation is a sweet one to tutor up with Beseech the Mirror. So uh, one notable thing with Song, it's easy to forget this, you cast it and then you can play an additional land on that turn. And then, you know, it's ability, whenever you cast a spell, you draw two cards. So with Song of Creation, generally what you want to do is you play a bunch of zero mana spells, and then, you know, these trigger, draw two more cards, and you're up in your storm, churning through your deck and everything. And as part of the Song of Creation package, I'm playing an offer you can't refuse, which works extremely well with Mishra's Bobble. Uh, if you don't know, basically you cast Mishra's Bobble, and then you counter your own Mishra's Bobble with offer you can't refuse. You end up with two, with two treasures at the end of it. And so you're up plus one mana. And if you have Song of Creation, then you just, you know, play two spells, drew four cards. So that puts you in a really good spot to win. Uh, some of the other Song of Creation decks I've seen other people play, though, they end up like having to jam like 14 zero mana spells or some insane number. And, you know, this deck tries to kind of skirt the line on, on how many zeros you can play. And part of the way I'm actually able to do that is by playing Underworld Breach as a two of in here. Uh, pretty much what happens is if you get a Song of Creation in play, you, know, you get to play your extra land and then if you can land an underworld breach and still have a mana around what you can do is you can cast your underworld after you a mana around after you cast your underworld breach you cast the breach and then you can you know play mistress baubles or dark rituals out of your graveyard and then you're drawing cards and you know you can you're less likely to fizzle on your song of creation because you have so many spells available out of your graveyard from your underworld breach. So uh, basically, if you ever get these two cards in play together, it's it's pretty much just game over. So um, we're playing two underworld breach, and that helps kind of bridge the gap there. Uh, as part of adding breaches or adding another breach and kind of a couple different storm angles to the deck, I'm also playing two Stitcher Supplier, which is an incredible card with Underworld Breach, just loads up your graveyard really well. So Stitcher Supplier coming in and coming out, loads uh, three cards in your graveyard. So you got Phyrexian Towers that can sacrifice those, which of course works well together. And then also I'm playing two Deadly Dispute with those Stitcher Suppliers as well. Uh, Deadly Dispute can also help you, you know, convert colors and draw extra cards, and it, it plays pretty well with Song of Creation as well. So uh, as part of the Song of Creation package, we're also playing a single Thassa's Oracle. Uh, one thing I, I occasionally would run into is somebody would have cards that would, you know, interact well against uh, Tendrils of Agony. Um, so I'm talking uh, Veil of Summer can be a problem. And also if your opponent ever has a Ley Line, the white Ley Line in play, he just can't target him. Uh, actually, there's one of the red Ley Lines that can kind of mess it up too. So um, having the Thassa's Oracle win in the deck is kind of a nice uh, plan B that you can have as well. Uh, I've trimmed down Springleaf Drums. We're playing two Strike It Rich, two Springleaf Drum. Not 100% on that. Uh, Strike It Rich plays well with Song of Creation. Uh, Springleaf Drum plays okay with it, but uh, this gives you, you know, another easy way to jump right into a Necro as well. 
So I think that's uh, pretty much it with the deck. Uh, again, uh, one thing that's a really common way to finish the game too is a way to up the storm if you don't have Necro or Song is just cast Beseech the Mirror, sacrifice an Ornithopter, get another Beseech, sacrifice maybe a Springleaf Drum, get another Beseech, sacrifice, I don't know, a Treasure Token, and then go ahead and just grab your Tendrils. And that was a free way to up your storm count by a whole bunch. So uh, that is the deck. And it, how I'm doing with the deck in the format, well, let me just jump over to untap.gg here and we can see my stats with the deck. I am uh, 38 and 22 with this deck. So I've got a lot of matches in 63% win rate. So I'm not, you know, lighting the world on fire, but I do think this is a pretty good deck. Uh, I have definitely a lot of misplays in this 38 and 22. Um, I can't help but think I probably could have picked up another five or six wins had I played a little bit better. But, uh, you know, Storm decks are tough to play, so if you're struggling with the deck, don't beat yourself up on it. Uh, you know, with the the rope that ticks down, you have to act kind of quickly, make plays fast, and so uh, you know it's it's a fun deck to play and uh, you know, pretty challenging. And, and this, the rights of uh, the the song of creation lines in the deck are giving you those different branches and stuff to play the deck is is a lot more interesting and a lot more challenging than what the previous Necrostorm deck was, I feel, where basically it was just, you you could have tunnel vision on how do I resolve Necropotence? And then that's like step one. And then step two is how do I, you know, finish my opponent? And this deck ends up being like, what is the correct way to navigate this game? Do I want to go for a Necro? Or does it, this look like a Song of Creation game? Or maybe this is a game where I'm going to actually try to storm out with maybe a Deadly Dispute, an Underworld Breach, and some other stuff. So there's a lot more diverse ways to play this particular build. And so a um, lot of, you know, a lot of branching decisions, and it's it's a lot of fun to play. So uh, we're going to get into some games here. And uh, so if you are enjoying the games, make sure you know, you're subscribed to the channel. And please hit the like button on this video. I appreciate that. I'm coming up on 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel here at a thousand subscribers, you get monetized on YouTube so you can make a little bit of money as you do this. So if you're not already, I very much appreciate it if you subscribed to uh, to the channel. So hopefully uh, we can get into some games here and uh, you know, kind of show how this, uh, how this deck rolls. All right, on the play here with a nice turn one Necro. So easy keep on this one. Opponent does not have a companion, and whenever I see that, I just assume they are show and tell. Well, let's uh, let's start things off with Watery Grave into Necro. And since we're on the play here, I'm not going to Necro too deep. Uh, we probably are going to want to have a setup turn here. The Song of Creation in my hand isn't really looking like it's too likely going to be my plan, but... That said, if I do draw Mishra's Bauble, I might be able to offer you can't refuse, cast my song. So there's a chance. I think I'm going to stop here at seven cards, though. I want to give myself plenty of life to work with to reload and combo out the, you know, on, on my turn three, if, uh, you know, if we're not seeing the right stuff here. This also could help us, you know, if we get Thoughts East or something. All right, we got Devil Underworld Breach. So definitely discarding one of those. Discarding four cards here. So let's... uh, One of the Breaches, Shambling Ghast, Polluted Delta, and our Necro. All right, so... We don't have a way... You know, we didn't hit like a Mishra's Bobble or something there, which would have been nice. Opponent just going Swamp Go. Interesting. Gonna be want to be careful not to like just die to a Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, by the way, Orcish Bowmasters, um, if they're in play and you have Song of Creation, you basically have one answer to it, and that's going to be Shambling Gas. You need to get a Shambling Gas down, find a way to sacrifice it, or just, you know, kill your opponent before the... Bowmaster kills you, and you, know, you got a lot of life to work with in those spots. So let's uh, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and just. I think I'm gonna just go strike it rich here, and let's draw a couple cards. Want to stay at a life total that we're not gonna die to like land lightning bolt or something. Um. 
kind of want to be at about five life. Five life could be enough where maybe I could song of creation and not die. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop here. I could definitely see taking a couple, at least one more card. Okay, so we hit our tendrils. Let's go ahead and discard Necro. We did get an offer you can't refuse with the bobble. So that would put us at one, two, three lands. We got a treasure in place. We basically have enough mana to cast Song of Creation, but then we wouldn't have any mana starters from there. So that's not really a line we can go with. Double Swamp from the opponent. Kind of don't want to have to cast Song if we don't have to against this, this mana here. And it's still doing nothing. Um, I wonder if we can just kill our opponent here. With if we go bobble offer, then we'll have that's two, three, four, five mana. So we can cast under world breach. Then it'd be you spell one, two, three. Probably cast a dark ritual. Four, deadly speed. Five. We're kind of stuck. I think though that's still gonna be my play. So for the offer you can't refuse your bobble, you gotta throw full control on for just a second. So it's storm count two. And so we'll have four cards in our graveyard there. I could actually cast Deadly Dispute. And that would put Opter and Deadly Dispute in my graveyard. Six cards in the yard then. Yeah, I think I can do that too. Let's uh oh, they're gonna orcish bowmasters if I do that. Is that okay? It's my storm at least. You know, let's uh let's start out with just casting the breach here. Storm count three and I'll go four. Exile, exile, exile. Yeah, maybe I should just play the Deadly Dispute. All right, so we're still going to have enough mana here to cast the Tendrils from this spot. Right? Yeah, I get a treasure here. So Storm is at five right now. There's the Bowmasters. Storm at six. Still isn't like the best thing in the world that I got him to play it. Mm. Okay, so I can play Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Necropotence, getting a Dark Ritual. And then I can Dark Ritual again out of my yard. Okay, yeah, this should actually do it then. Probably should just cast the Deadly Dispute before casting the, the Breach, just... This is ultimately where I wanted to end up anyways, so. All right, so Dark Rit. And we'll get to Dark Rit again. And now we hit him with the Lethal Tendrils. All right. Just barely. We needed them to play the Bowmasters to actually make it lethal. That's always kind of fun when that happens. All right, so win in kind of the classic Necro way here. Opponent didn't really, you know, get to do anything. Sometimes though with these Storm decks, it's, your, my opponent had a turn two Bowmaster. That was their first play. And that's like a reasonable play to have sometimes. Um, but you just get to, you know, completely sidestep interaction like that. All right, on the draw here. And this hand is pretty slow. Fast's Oracle is not very good in your opener. Um, I'm going to mulligan this. Beseech is technically action in my hand, but I can't bargain it, so we'll send it out. And this hand seems a lot better. We're going to 
I think dump the shambling ghast and we're going to strike it rich in the next turn we can uh sack that to uh cast this beseech the mirror up against Gigantha. probably up against uh is this Winota or is this a uh domain zoo deck probably domain All right, Death Rite Shaman. Ooh. This hand can attempt a turn one kill, and I feel when you can go for a turn one kill, you must attempt the turn one kill. And that's what we're going to try here. So Dark Ritual. So we're not going to have much juice left in the tank here, but we got to try it. All right, cast the bargain, send in our ornithopter packing, and basically we're going to then grab our song of creation. We've got a black floating, and we're going to cast this strike it rich. Now, worst case, if this totally fizzles here, we're going to have a strike it rich in the graveyard, two lands in play, and a song of creation to get things going. So, um, why is it holding priority? I don't think there's a okay yeah so we fizzled at least we tried let's see what they do they can actually death right shaman my uh strike it rich away if they have a black source i guess that's okay that's all right I'm not sure if going for the turn one kill is you know the right play in a spot like that but I don't know. I like going for it. it. Would make for a pretty epic YouTube video if it did. Okay, I'm gonna play the Shambling Gas here and not uh, off of the treasure. I've got a lot of lands to work with, and Shambling Gas could potentially convert into more mana this turn. All right, they just went ahead and packed it up. Turn two kill. Still don't know if that would have worked out from that position. But if we just have Song of Creation in play for the rest of the game, then uh, you're going to win that thing. All right, on the play here. And this hand is missing an artifact to Beseech Away, but I think I'm going to go ahead and try this hand out. This is kind of where um, this deck can play a little bit, a little bit like more diverse with this uh deadly dispute here so we'll go ahead and shambling gas and then next turn we'll probably end up just disputing that away and then having this beseech the mirror beseech then if there's pressure on us we could probably beseech into song of creation and try to combo out from there our right, opponent on a dark ritual deck as well let's uh let's go ahead and hit do I want to play around as like a spell pierce? I think if they have a spell pierce, I want them to spell pierce my shambling or my uh, deadly dispute here because I'm going to end the turn with a couple treasures and a beseech the mirror. So we'll uh, we'll go for it here. This is a pretty irresistible target if you have a spell pierce, in my opinion. Hmm. Okay, cool. And we got Dark Ritual now, which could let us play through play through a Spell Pierce. All right, so how do I want to do this? I can Dark Rit, Dark Rit, that's five, six mana off of these two lanes, seven mana off of that. I got eight, nine off of my treasures. I think I want to go play a land, play a Blood Crypt, I guess. We'll play that Delta. I'm going to go just Dark Ritual into Beseech. If they have a Spell Pierce, I can pay for it without having to even burn a Ritual. And here's where I'm going to go for the Song of Creation, because if they are Show and Tell deck, we need to go. All right, let's... Uh... Let me go ahead and lead with this Springleaf Drum. This can get me mana off if I draw an Ornithopter. 
I really should have broken this fetch right away, actually. Oh, and I wish... Right, let me just break my fetch. I kind of wish I would have um, kept up or offered you can't refuse this spring leaf drum, but a little late now. All right, let's tap this one here, get my shambling ghast in. And we'll ritual from here. Let's see what we draw. I might need to offer it. Now let's let's go ahead and draw. We we hit something else here. I'm keeping full control on the chance I need to counter my own spells here. And yeah, I think this time I'm going to go ahead and offer my own dark ritual. I've still got a black floating, and I really could use a different color of mana for this strike it rich. Oh, nice. All right. Um, so that gets countered. And now I think I just go right into Underworld Breach. And then I should be able to just cast some rituals out of my yard and just win from here. So let's... Uh, Unless they, they've been like completely super slow rolling something, this uh, this should just lock it up. Um, we might as well go for the fastest Oracle kill here, simply to play around like a, I don't know, a Veil of Summer. I guess I also could beat a Veil of Summer, given I have um, have all these offer you can't refuse. This. So we'll, we'll just kind of see. I think they'll just pack it up here pretty soon. Uh, what else do we need to do? Let's uh, let's just demonic. Demonic for dark red is always kind of a safe play. Um, might need to have to like try to convert colors of mana here. So actually, I'll go ahead and get a spring leaf drum. Um, the deadly dispute with shambling gas is another way to change colors of mana that you have available as well. Right, let's just get this going. Come on. I'm surprised my opponent's making me play this all out, but that's fine. Yeah, so you can see here, it kind of looked like we might be just stuck on black mana, but the drums and the deadly disputes kind of let you change those colors as needed. So 15 cards here. Let's cast a couple more rituals. And yeah, now it seems like a good time to just fire off the tendrils and see what they do. Again, even if they have the Veil of Summer, we'll just get them with the uh, the fastest Oracle kill. All right, nice. We are on the draw here with pretty decent hand. Uh, we got a Dark Ritual, Bobble, and Beseech the Mirror. It gives us a way to get out one of our big enchantments. So definitely keep here. Opponents on Gigantha makes me think Jund or Domain Zoo most uh, most of the time. All right, so we could actually go turn one Bobble, counter on Bobble with an offer you can't refuse. That doesn't really accelerate us into anything. Uh, I'm just actually going to play out this Stitcher Supplier here. I don't anticipate needing to cast an offer. I could also see just playing out the Bobble and countering it, but... The thing I don't like about that here is you're going to need something to sacrifice to the Beseech, and you're going to end up sacking one of your tokens anyways, so don't love that. All right, so Vi Triome and Breeding Pool makes me think there's an Orcish Bowmasters on the way. So I'm not going to attack here. Uh, do I want to sacrifice my supplier? I think so. 
Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. Dark crit, dark crit. Okay. So I can go dark ritual here. It's kind of nice. We actually have an extra mana available. So we can play around something like a... Uh, uh, what is it? Stubborn Denial here. And I'm going to just go ahead and go Beseech. And one thing that's kind of cool with this deck is, you know, as you do this, you can go into a Necro, or you can go into a Song of Creation in a spot like this. I'm thinking they got a Bowmaster, and I just want to get a Necro down here. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some cards going. Now, our hand is not super stellar or anything like that. Uh, we want to be careful not to just, you know, die in a turn or two here um well maybe maybe we can only survive one more turn so let's say they go bowmaster that's going to deal three to me basically and then if they have like a tribal flames that'd be another five so kind of want to stay at like nine life yeah let's uh let's stop here this also plays around double bowmaster lightning bolt Though, I guess I do have this offer you can't refuse. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd end up cashing that in somewhere. Maybe I should draw more cards then, for that matter. Nah, 11 sounds pretty good. So, not too into keeping this Deadly Dispute because I'm worried about the Bowmaster. Yeah, alright, Bowmaster's in there. Okay, Demonic is much needed. We need a Dark Ritual. We need some mana booster of some sort. Yikes. Okay. It's discarding seven. Well, if, if so double Ornithopter, double Phyrexian Tower is kind of where we're getting our mana generated from. Oh, we got a lot of lands. Um... Oh, right. We're going to discard this Deadly Dispute, I think. I need to discard one more card. Don't need all of these Mishra's Bobbles. Actually, I can't play Double Offer. Yeah, let's discard like this. Hmm. Maybe I could actually cast two Offer You Can't Refuse. I could start things out by offering my own Bobble. Yeah, I kind of wish I kept the other Offer. Okay, well... I guess I need, like, an artifact. No, I don't necessarily need an artifact sack. Hmm. Because I have my Necro. I can bargain away. All right. Oh, I thought I had two Ornithopters. Did I discard one by accident? No, I don't. All right. Ooh, so how can we get out of this thing here? So I go Ornithopter. And then I have access to two, three, four mana. And that's it. I might need to actually beseech up my tendrils um and i can't actually just go right into a kill this turn then so ooh, i don't love that and with how tight my mana is right now i cannot actually play around a stubborn knot unless i offer my own bubble all right we're doing that all right bubble offer Oh, I should have played out my Ornithopter first. No, it doesn't matter. All right. Thopter. Let's go ahead and demonic up a Dark Ritual. And so I'm still playing around a stubborn denial through this whole thing here. Okay. And they cannot have double. All right. So we'll pay for that. 
And now I think actually they just made my tendrils lethal. Pretty sure, because now I can sacrifice both of these. It might have already been lethal, I don't know. So tendrils is at 18 points, so yeah. There we go. Sacra Necro. And I'll do it. All right, sweet. Up against Monster from the Lost, another no companion player. Uh, this hand is missing some sort of payoff, so we're going to have to mulligan this one. Can't help but wonder if this Strike It Rich were like an Underworld Breach. Oh good is this hand is it keepable because the citrus supplier underworld breach combo is pretty nice of course but i don't know if it's if that would be good enough i would really have been interested to try that hand out but we're gonna mulligan this uh, what's this hand do we might be playing offer on our own bobble uh we have a deadly dispute yeah what are we gonna sacrifice this seems like a keep but what are we doing here? I could actually just not keep the bobble. I could end up just playing Stitcher Supplier and then Deadly Dispute it. I, th I think that sounds pretty good. This is going to allow me to, um, to offer my opponent's spell because no companion often makes me think I'm playing in Show and Tell or another combo deck. So if they happen to take out my Beseech the Mirror somehow, Stitcher Supplier Deadly Dispute might be able to come up with an Underworld Breach somehow, get, get something going. Okay, Ornithopter from the opponent. I think I'm going to lead like this here. As I do that, uh, I was like, don't mill over your watery grave. So actually, it probably would have been worthwhile playing the polluted delta there for, for that reason alone. Just to not take that risk. I was kind of thinking this would conceal a little bit of what I'm going on and look like the Rakdos Breach deck instead of, you know, something a bit different. But uh, I should have just played the delta in the watery grave there. Another thing I was thinking too is if I play this, I could hide it all the way through next turn that I have blue mana. Anyways, they're on a brainstorm fetch, so they've gotten some nice optimization and fixing going on. Hopefully this is not a thought seize. Hopefully not a thought seize. I think that's what's happening though. Eek. All right. Well, they're probably taking Beseech the Mirror. Unless they have the full combo next turn. Okay, they take Beseech. Oh, I hit the Underworld Breach. Interesting. Um, question Do I want to play Deadly Dispute? Right now, my main phase. You know, do it while I know I can resolve it, because these decks oftentimes will play Spell Pierce. Or do I want them just to Spell Pierce my Deadly Dispute if I have a Underworld Breach going on? I kind of want the cards, though, and I kind of need the treasure. I think I'm going to go ahead and Deadly Dispute now. This way I still have... Offer you can't refuse up off of a treasure. And we'll send it back. Ten cards in her graveyard. None of them are Dark Ritual, which is basically the card we need to dig out of a of a spot like this. Or out of a underworld breach and make it a combo kill. OK, 
Okay, they grab the hedge mains, main phase. Okay. Nothing else. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I don't think I can actually kill from here. So I'm going to just play Strike It Rich and pass the turn, holding up my double offer you can't refuse. through time yikes i think i need to let that resolve because if i just go off her and then they go into their turn they're gonna have a bunch of mana and uh probably could win through a single offer but right now they're at least constrained on mana they're probably gonna thought seize me here okay maybe not Okay, there's a thought seize. I'm gonna let that through. Yeah, they gotta take an offer. All right, I'll um, take another. I think we should be able to, oh, they took the breach on the second one, okay. Hmm. So I can play a Beseech the Mirror right now, and then I'm get a Song of Creation and just try to win with my double Ornithopter. And we're also hoping they don't have a Spell Pierce. Um, I think that's the play I should make, though. Oh, I don't... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'd only have... I'm going to have to sacrifice an Ornithopter to actually make that happen. So I only have one draw, two kind of lined up. I could also play a Necropotence and then keep up an offer you can't refuse. No, I won't be able to do that. I think they're going to wear me down if I, if I don't go for this play here. So if they have a Spell Pierce, that's going to be real nice for them. But I think I need to go for the Song of Creation kill here. Okay, let's cross our fingers here. With just one draw two lined up, it's not great odds that you can combo out from there, but I haven't played a land yet. Mm. Okay, yeah, so let's uh let's hope they can't you know their their remaining cards aren't like show and tell munitions attraxa or something. Okay, cycling Lorian revealed. Interesting. I would feel like if they had show and tell omniscience, you would want to keep that card. Okay, Mystic Sanctuary is going to bring back a dig through time, I guess. Well, we're going to have a pretty live turn here. If we just if we hit a land that's not a brick because we can strike it rich out of our yard. If we hit a spell, as long as it's not a four mana spell, we don't have that many left in the deck because we got a few in our yard already. Show and tell, okay. In Omniscience, okay. Okay, draw. Assemble the team. As soon as they play that, I just assume they either hit another assemble the team or they're going to hit. They're going to hit exactly what they're looking for. Okay, second omniscience, demonic tutor. Okay. Do they have to get a Traxa here? Mastermind's acquisition. Okay. Into a Traxa. Okay, they did it. Good game. Yeah, I don't think if I would have tried to slow play this out, that would have uh, 
I don't think that would have worked out. Born upon a wind, the wind would have, I think, allowed them to get that instant speed and omniscience kill at some point. Possibly next turn, even, or, or like this turn, if I would have waited. And so I would have been tapped out at some point, probably. It's not like my two draws were very good, anyways. So, all right, we'll pack it up. Omniscience, this is kind of a weird hand. Uh, we don't have a black mana to get things started, but we do have you know, a little bit of acceleration and some payoffs. Any black source is a good draw. We've got a Mishra's Bobble to trigger stuff. I think this is actually a keep. This is pretty close, though. Having an offer you can't refuse with the Springleaf Drum could be pretty nice against, like, a show-and-tell deck here, which is what I'm thinking they're on. So let's uh, just go ahead and get a Bobble down and a Springleaf Drum. And we'll draw on their upkeep. Against a Bowmaster deck, I would definitely plan to just break it on my turn there, but... Corrosion Grip. Whoa. All right, definitely want to keep that in mind when we're playing cards like Necropotence. I imagine this means they are show-and-tell decked out for the mirror with the Grip. So main phase brainstorm here, probably into a fetch land, and they might be ready to go next turn. Um, this offer you can't refuse, so we really want to try to keep that up, which should be easy to do with the, the drum here. Hopefully, I mean, we got to draw a black source to land a shambling gas here, or the, the supplier. Okay, there we go. Two black sources, nice. Um, how do I want to do this? I could basically play out a shambling gas, sack it to the tower, play another gas and a supplier. And then I'm left with the treasure and the drum up. That sounds pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just get a basic swamp here for this play though. Really hiding this offer you can't refuse as well. I'm going to sacrifice the Shambling Gas as well, just so I have a treasure hanging out uh, instead of just milling three random cards, I think. So we'll get Shambling Gas down. And I'm not even going to bother with tapping it to the drum here, right? Because I need to keep it up for offer. This show and tell menace, this deck is everywhere. I feel like one in three, one in four games, I'm playing against it. And uh, really, this conversion to start playing offer you can't refuse instead of the ley lines is really what I needed to uh, to actually make it make it not just a well, it felt like a pretty difficult matchup, not unwinnable. Just they had the upper hand because. Your combo, you had to pass the turn. Their combo, they don't have to pass the turn. And so you could, you know, get your Necro, draw a bunch of cards, and then they just don't care. They just untap, land their um, Omniscience, and then just go. Yeah, it looks like they're going for it here. Ooh, Demonic. Okay. I wonder if they're getting a, a Veil of Summer here. You know, they shocked in that, so uh, it's something to keep in mind. What can we do about that then? Well, we could... That's going to be tough to beat. Um, I think I want to just go for like a normal kill and then try to keep up an offer you can't refuse. So let's uh, shock in our Watery Grave. Do I need to mill with the Stitcher Supplier? I don't have a Dark Ritual. 
I think I need to start out by doing this first here. I might actually just have to go grab a Necropotence. We'll see. If I hit a Dark Ritual here, I don't think I need to. Okay, I did not. All right, well, let's... uh. Let's grab a Necro here, and I, if I can keep up both in that land and my treasure, I might actually be able to have a double offer you can't refuse against a show and tell. Because again, I, I'm, I'm a little worried that they might have a Veil of Summer here. So I'm going to want to go pretty hard on this Necro to find that second offer you can't refuse, and also to try to have a hand that can combo uh, next turn as well. So we need we need to go hard here. Uh, 12, let's go 13 cards. So we got a stocked graveyard here. Now, what I was thinking before I got the Necro was if I hit a Dark Ritual, I think I could have actually, you know, I have 12 cards in the graveyard. I think I could have went to an Underworld Breach and then be able to combo out from there. But, um, you know, I would have been able to sacrifice a Necro as well. I would have had, I think, 14 cards in my graveyard. And that should be able to do it. You know, they're only at 15, so it's not like they had unlimited life or something. But without the Dark Rid, I don't think I could actually muster up a kill from there. And as tempting as it is that you want to just like math out the whole thing, unfortunately with the timer on Arena, you got to actually just, you know, shoot the ball, make a play. All right. All right. There's the second offer. Good. So we want to keep double offer, dark ritual, beseech. And then really a lot of this stuff doesn't actually matter here. Uh, sure, you got to brainstorm. Um, don't need double Dudley dispute. Don't need double ornithopter. Really don't need the shambling ghast. Okay, so oh, it just shuffled my hand again. All right, the cards to keep. We're gonna keep dark rit, offer beseech. Uh, another offer. I think I want to keep a Deadly Dispute. Uh, what else? I can get two more cards. I don't really need another land. Um, take a... Let's take an Ornithopter and a Deadly Dispute. Oh, I don't need Double Deadly. Let's take a Bobble, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this should be able to use a a double counter through a, a combo kill from them. Now, if they thought sees me here, that'd be pretty annoying. Show and tell. Eh. You got anything from those treasures? Hmm? Hopefully it's not thought sees. think this offer really stunned him there. Yeah, nice. No point in attacking. They're at an even life total. Let's just knock them out, get this over with here. They do have some mana up, so they might actually be able to play their own counter. But again, I have even another offer kind of loaded up here. So let's, uh, let's get all this mana here. So we got five, six, seven, eight mana available. Uh, and we have Storm of Four. Beseech could basically go right into it. Let's um yeah, you know, let's start this though by sacking this ornithopter here. Maybe we'll get more options even. Oh, underworld breach, nice. Uh 
start out here just see if we can finish them like this here sack this bobble and we can go beseech sacrificing our necro And we could even sacrifice a treasure, right? Yeah, we can sack a treasure in here. Oh, we don't have another, um, we don't have another Beseech in the deck. So I'm gonna just jump into Underworld Breach territory here. And we'll do this for a little bit. Couple rituals, and then we'll just fire off our tendrils back at him again. Want to get a nice amount of mana floating. Fully stocked graveyard. Sure, we'll just keep ritualing here. The more rituals we play, the more we can really play around stuff. All right, eight mana in the pool. I think I'll go ahead and just go demonic for for our tendrils and try it that way. And then we still got enough mana to cast the tendrils out of our yard again if this were to fail. All right, offer you can't refuse. Seems like it's putting in some work already. Oh, there's the veil. Okay, so let's... Offer that again. They got another, we can offer again. You know, at some point in here too, I could have, um, if I really wanted to play around veils, like a bunch of veils, I could have gotten a song of creation and that would have let me combo too. Yep, yep. Going for another brainstorm, okay. Digging for more veils. All right, looks like we got it through. All right. On the play here, and these two cards are basically dead in your opener. This hand is not very good, so we're gonna have to mulligan this. What do we got here? Oh, we have a turn two demonic. We can also offer one of our own baubles. So this technically could create a turn two necro. Uh, weirdly, I think this is a keep. I don't love it though. I think I can turn two necro, right? No, actually this is a little off of that. I still think this is a keep though. And I'm planning to just offer my own bobble here, I think, on turn one. I don't know. That's a risky play against the Lurus deck. You know what? Let's just play the bobble out. And we'll see how this goes. I'm going to be bobbling myself. All right. This good old Rakdos fun. Okay. 
So keeping the Ornithopter could let me necro in a bit here off of this demonic. You know, I, I don't know what it, the right way to play this out is because as soon as I played the bobble, I lost the ability to offer my own bobble up. So real tricky game here. Let's go ahead and get this water grave. Maybe the offer will be useful. I don't know. Into blood crypt and the siege. Okay, so we could demonic tutor up what? Demonic for dark ritual doesn't really take me anywhere. Demonic for ornithopter, no. Let's go ahead and cast this demonic here. I really don't know what I'm getting here. Not a where, where you want to be when you're demonicking. Um, Dark Ritual is kind of a safe bet. It goes well with Underworld Breach and Beseech. Unfortunately, I don't actually have the... Actually, I think I'm going to go with a Stitcher Supplier here because I have this Frexian Tower. The Stitcher Supplier, play it here, potentially get a block in. I could also sacrifice it to this tower. That's going to get my graveyard going for this Underworld Breach. Demonic from the opponent. Okay. Is that going to give you Delirium too? Yep. That's all right. I wonder what they're going to get though. Maybe they have a hate piece in their main deck. Dark Ritual. Love it. Okay. So if I go Dark Rit Supplier, Underworld Breach. Let's see, my mana would be plus two. So I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. Minus one, so it's five, minus three, or minus two. I think I've got the mana. I think I got this here. Oh, no, 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 no. Auto tapper. Auto tapper, no. Okay. I needed this red mana so badly. All right. What can I do from here? Cast Beseech the Mirror. I think that's kind of what I need to do. And I, I'm back again to not knowing what I'm going to get. Uh, do, do, do. I could get another Underworld Breach just so I have two chilling in my hand. Um, I'm planning to offer whatever they... I'm going to grab another Dark Rip. If they just tutored up a... Discard spell I can offer. You can't refuse it and hopefully live through the turn. If they have something like a rolling vortex, I think I'm actually going to be able to, to win through that. Oh no, am I just dead now? Auto tapper. Well, we're going to try to offer a underworld breach here. No point in offering a Dark Ritual. It doesn't accomplish anything. So this is going to force them to have another Underworld Breach to actually win from here. Okay, they picked a Blue Wrist. Nice. Okay, let's make sure we tap the right way here. Don't have, all right, right. I have Underworld Breach, right. It's dark Ritual. Underworld Breach, let's go. So that's Storm Count 2. We've got 14 cards, okay. Probably looking at going like Dark Ritual, Demonic for Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, play another one or two out of my yard, and then I would cast 
um, this beseech the mirror, sacrificing my breach to grab the tendrils. They were at 16, so yeah, we definitely had it there. I think we had it the prior turn as well. 